The left side of the screen is a live webcam feed um, of the system, and on the right side of the screen is a live emulation of the pendant. I'm plugging in our water cooler there uh, and turning on our welder. Uh, this particular system that you see here is our push-pull configuration. Um, let me grab the camera and kind of show you there. So um, that's our standard duty welder down there, the robot cabinet, the robot brains, and also our controls and integration package. You see the uh, uh, S74 wire feeder there on the back and also the water cooler behind that. That's all attached to the mobile system. And then you see as well, uh, we've got that uh, bundle on a uh, cable balancer going to that pull torch there. Uh, that pull torch, you know, again, is what's enabling those softer aluminum wires to be uh, welded on our system uh, at the same time with just a simple liner change and zoomable change, drive roll change as well. Um, you can also weld steel, um, both mild carbon steel and stainless steel with this system. So it's a really versatile system. A lot of the folks that have, have gone forward with the push-pull system, it's, hey, we do a little bit of aluminum, but we also do some carbon, we do some stainless. So the ability to switch between different types of materials is really important, and that's what this system configuration allows as well. Um, so I'm going to step up here uh, to our pendant. What you see here is basically what um, uh, your cobot champion, your programmer would see um, once they've uh, gone through the unpack and setup process. There's a video of what that setup process looks like on our YouTube channel. It's a nine-minute video. Again, that unpack setup usually takes a few hours. So this is kind of what they'd see. Hey, I'm going to make my first weld in a T-plate. I'm going to hit New Program. I'm going to go ahead and save this program as uh, whatever name I'd want to call it. And that's going to allow me to call this program back up in the future uh, if I was going to run this in production, right? So I can call that up and, hey, I just want you to repeat that program over and over to achieve my production. Um, so I'm going to start here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click, or let me explain this. On the left side of the screen uh, are the nodes in the Vecta software that I can add to my program tree. In the middle part of the screen is my program tree that's just going to run uh, sequentially in a linear fashion to achieve the motion and the processes that I tell it to do. And on the right side of the screen is the detail pane where I'm going to tell the robot what I want to do with each node. So I'm going to start this program off with an air move. An air move is any time that you're just basically moving without welding. Um, so that's useful for, you know, defining a home position, a load on loan position that we'll do here, moving around clamps or to different parts of the parts so that you can get to different welds. I'm just going to go ahead and set our air move kind of back right here, uh, almost simulating if this was kind of a load on load position I can get at the part and make changes and load unload while the robot's out of the way, right? You saw me using the free drive button there. So right now the robot's rigid. When I hit this free drive, free drive button, it puts it into a soft servo mode that allows me to move that around. So that looks like a good position for my air moves. I'm gonna go ahead and hit update waypoint. What you saw happen right there is it taught the position of the robot as that air move right there. And it also uh, unhighlighted that node. Uh, it went from yellow to white basically, you know, signifying to the, the programmer, the champion, hey, I've got everything I need for that node right there. So I've got my air move program. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to make a weld. So I hit the weld button. That Hitting that weld node adds a full template into the program tree. And that template starts with an approach point, a start point, an end point, and a depart point as well. And that's how every basic template comes in. Great for handling single linear welds like we're doing here today. Uh, if I wanted to, if I had a more complex or compound path, I could also add weld through points to it, like you see here. Really great if you need to do compound paths or if you have to do circles segments in the path as well without turning off, without turning off the uh, arc. This is a great example of that here where we actually, this pipe and gusset to the base flange is a single start and stop. It's a weld start, weld through L, weld through C's around uh, the base there, around the pipe, and then a weld end L to make that final guts of things. So a single start stop made a beautiful weld, and you're able to do those compound paths uh, by just chaining together different three points. But in this case, for this demo, we're just doing the single T plate, so I'm actually going to go ahead and delete those weld throughs and just get back to my single start and single end. Now the approach and depart points, by default in the Vector software, um, are automatically programmed based on where you teach to start in the end. And that's just to save time for the programmer. Basically, it's just going to back out in the direction of the nozzle a little bit um, to, for the approach and depart. I could, if I need to, make custom waypoints for those. If, you know, backing out in the nozzle is going to cause a collision or something like that, I can also do that. But for an overwhelming majority of, um, 
uh, welds that we're going to do, that automatic approach works great and it saves the programmer some time. So the next thing highlighted that I need to pay attention to is my weld start L. So I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to use my free drive button here again to bring down my nozzle um, to the uh, to the plate here. I'm going to jog a little bit of wire uh, just so I can make sure I've got that position right where I want it. Let's see here. Get my work angle set. And it's funny, coming from traditional automation, I didn't know how much I'd use free drive. Um, I thought I'd use more of the handlebars, but I use free drive all the time to actually um, firm program points. It's just so intuitive and easy to set uh, uh, how you want your angles and your positions and things like that. So that looks pretty good. I've got about a 45 degree work angle and I've got about a 10 to 15 degree push. And that wire's right in the joint there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit update waypoint, teaches the current position of the robot as my weld start point. Next, I'm gonna highlight the weld in. And in this case, I am actually gonna use the handlebars, the XYZ handlebars that are available uh, on the system as well. And the reason why is that allows me to maintain a consistent torch angle from the start to the end, giving me the most consistent looking weld. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jog that linearly along the plate. Looks pretty good right there. Get it right to the end. Just a hair. That looks perfect right there. And hit OK. So now I've got my weld in programmed. Last thing I'm going to do, I want it to return to that original load on load position. So I'm going to hit copy and paste on that air move and drop it below the weld template. So now I've got uh, my final air move move met that load on load. So the last thing we're going to do before we actually run this program uh, is uh, define our weld process parameters. So uh, there's a few ways to do that. I can choose from a library of common data. Uh, our system does ship with uh, some common data already in there. It's kind of an out of the box, ready to weld for a variety of different wire sizes, uh, weld sizes and materials. Um, I could pick one of those. I can also change my data and make that uh, unique for this given weld here. So, hey, you know what? I wanna put a little more wire in there and maybe widen my weave just a hair or something like that. I'm able to do that as well. And I can save this new data to my common data library. I can also go and make updates to my common data library um, through the installation setup tab as well, if I'd like. So, but in this case, we're just gonna run the out of the box parameters with for uh, a quarter inch fillet with the pulse waveform with 035 steel wire in the two F horizontal position like you see here. And we're just gonna run those out of the box parameters. So next, before we weld, I just want to do a dry run. What you saw me doing there was toggling the weld live weld block. Uh, I can also check that in my Vectus status screen here. I've got my weld block, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit play. Weld block just means I'm going to run through the entire program as if um, you know it was ready to go. I'm just not turning on the arc, so I can check and make sure I've got my points right. That's really nice because uh, you know it's hard for me to walk and talk, so it's a talking program. I just want to make sure I haven't screwed up any of my points or anything like that. Um, everything's looking pretty good right here, right in the joint where I want it. Uh, it'll back out to its automatically programmed depart point and move back to its load on load. So that looks all good. I'm going to make sure I got gas. I sure do. Uh, I'm going to step away here, grab my arc flash protection, and we're going to go ahead and live weld this part here. Um, I'm just uh, changing to the weld live like you see there. I've got welding live, and we're good to go. So fire in the hole. Looks good. Set this down, grab the camera here. Let's take a look at that result. Looks pretty great. It's that quarter inch fillet there, and here's just a few other uh, examples of applications. Again, that dime stack uh, aluminum that you see there, uh, circular weld, uh, that was run at 35 inches a minute with pulse, 045 metal core on 3 eighths, cold rolled, really nice flat bead. Multi-pass example, uh, you know, flare bevel and flare V-groove. Uh, we've got an outside corner there on, on an exotic material. Um, 308 uh, stainless, small, quick weld there to kind of, that's one of those where um, 
hey, we're trying to convert the TIG process to a MIG process and see the productivity gains there. Um, similar uh, example there. And then you saw that one earlier. So just a few different application examples there.